Sun Worship It is one of the oldest practices of pagan idolatry on earth that can be traced to every continent and virtually every culture in the pre-Christian world. The oldest culture on earth, Babylon, worshipped the sun whose name was Shamash. He was usually depicted as a circle with eight rays of the sun. Sir E. A. Wallace Budge, one of the greatest antiquity scholars of the 20th century, analyzed many of the Babylonian cylinder seals where Shamash is usually represented as rising between two mountains, for the Babylonians believed that each mountain had a door. When the sun rose in the east, it opened the eastern door in the morning. And when the sun set and disappeared in the west, it went through the western door in the evening. Babylon's younger sister culture, the Assyrians, worshipped the sun whose name was Asher, who was also their chief deity. He was usually depicted as a winged figure in a circle, sometimes with a bow and arrow in artwork when they were going to war. The Assyrians were heavily influenced by both the Babylonian and the Egyptian culture, where the Egyptian sun god like the Assyrians was also depicted as a circle with wings. Whether it was titled Ra or the Aten under the fear of Akhenaten, it was the same pagan sun deity. In Volume 1 of History of Ancient Egypt published in 1881, George Rawlinson, Camden Professor of Ancient History in the University of Oxford, documented how sun worship dominated every aspect of the ancient Egyptian culture. The Egyptians were profoundly religious. All knew that there was one god and understood that when worship was offered to Kem or Neph or Ta or Maut or Thoth or Ammon, the one god was worshipped under some one of his forms or in some one of his aspects. Ra was not a sun deity with a distinct and separate existence, but the supreme god acting in the sun, making his light to shine on the earth, warming, cheering and blessing it and so Ra might be worshipped with all the titles of honour. No matter what deity was worshipped in Egypt, it represented the sun god. And this pagan idolatry changed the glory of the uncorruptible god into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, the Holy Scripture says. The scarab beetle was one of the most famous of the Egyptian deities. It can be found everywhere. When the beetle rolled down, the Egyptians superstitiously believed that the beetle was the sky god who was rolling the sun across the heavens. It was viewed as the emissary of the sun and was mentioned in the Egyptian book of the dead. And nearly every monument, manuscript or Egyptian artifact, the sun god is depicted with different deities and different pharaohs. In the Americas, the sun god was usually represented in human form, sometimes in a reserved seated position. In Mesoamerica, there were temples dedicated to the sun in places like Teotihuacan in Mexico, and the Aztecs continued from their predecessors offered human sacrifices to him. While all the civilizations mentioned no longer exist, in India, the sun god is still worshipped, and the name is Sura and mantras or prayers are offered to it. The 13th century AD Konark Sun Temple that is still in use is adorned in its artwork with the same eight-rayed wheel or rays of the sun that was incorporated from the culture of ancient Babylon. The only pre-Christian culture on earth that didn't worship the sun were the children of Israel. And there was one thing that singled them out from all the other nations on earth to prevent them from sinking into pagan idolatry. God said, Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. But when the children of Israel strayed from God, it was always the sun that replaced the worship of God. That ball of fire that God created on the fourth day of creation to rule over the day 
and was for signs and seasons became their god and this idolatry was unequivocally condemned god said then said he unto me hast thou seen this o son of man turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater abominations than these and he brought me into the inner court of the lord's house and behold at the door of the temple of the lord between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east and they worshipped the sun toward the east. There was one culture that amalgamated both the eastern or oriental culture and the Greek or western culture into one, the Roman Empire. Having one of the most vast empires, its faithful soldiers were its strength and it was renowned for its colosseums all over its empire where its gladiators fought gruesome and bloody battles in its arenas, its entertainment industry or Hollywood of the day. Its famous sun deities were adopted from the east and it was called Sol where we get the name Solar System. These sun gods from Rome can still be found today. In this monument from ancient Rome you can see a smiling sun within a wreath this has now become the logo of the United Nations. The god Mithra was sometimes depicted with the rays of the sun coming out of his head. And this was the gift French Freemasons gave to the United States that is now called the Statue of Liberty. But when Rome was at its height, and when Caesar Augustus restored paganism to its zenith by rebuilding all the pagan temples, one was to be born that was to counteract the pagan idolatry of ancient Rome. Prince Emmanuel, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. When Jesus came to reverse the effects of the fall, he instituted two things that would clearly distinguish him from all the false sun gods that existed before him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Unlike the Hebrew Passover that was to be clearly kept on the 14th day of the month Abib or Nisan, Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath, our Passover, can be kept on any day, week or month. Jesus was crucified in a horrific death to pay the price of sin and he died on one of the very insignias of the sun god, the cross. And it wasn't long before this symbol was incorporated into the church. When the ancients looked at the sun and saw its rays shining out from it, the cross later became a symbol for the sun. The Babylonians had the cross on their slender seals in obeisance for the sun god Shamash. And the Assyrian monarchs wore the cross or sun god around their necks in full recognition of their homage to the sun. And on Egyptian monuments, the cross can be found etched in stone where it either looks like a hot cross bun or the ankh. Egyptian priests also wore the ankh around their necks like the Assyrian kings and even the Mesoamerican culture, the Omex, had the two crosses on their apparel. If there is one system that sun worship has been preserved in its entirety, it's the papacy, whose headquarters is Vatican City. In the main square in Vatican City, facing St. Peter's Basilica, is one of the oldest symbols of the sun and people walk over it without in the least being aware of it. From an aerial view, the Vatican Square has the eight-rayed sun wheel, the largest on earth, that forms into the shape of a phallus and it can be traced back to the Babylonian sun god, Shamash, who has his eight rays. As you walk into St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican and tour around, Sun worship symbols are everywhere. 
but as you look into a corner, you see a statue of a woman holding the sun god in her arms, which shows the pagan mysteries have not died. You'll also see a pagan sun god with a halo or sun on its head, who the Vatican calls Saint Peter. It's not Peter, it's the sun god, and the halo can be traced to the Eastern cultures where the Buddhist and Hindu religions adorned their deities with the sun behind its head. And you can see that Catholic art tried to paganize Jesus Christ and show images of him with the halo, where critics assert that Jesus is not the son of God, but the sun God. Even the image of Jesus was borrowed from the pagan world. Look at this image of the Greek god Zeus, who they call the father of the gods. And when you go into the Vatican and look at the images of who they say is Jesus with a halo on his head, it is Zeus, not Christ. But this is the image that dominates Christendom, Zeus. Even rappers have made Zeus their top bling iconic Jesus piece figure that they adorn around their necks. The wedding ring is also from sun worship and has been incorporated into the church. The man who introduced the paganization of Christianity is Roman Emperor Constantine, whose bogus conversion caused the greatest damage to the purity of apostolic Christianity. His contemporary Eusebius recorded a list of all the pagan customs he introduced into the church, and Cardinal John Henry Newman the Anglican convert to Catholicism who was beatified in England in September 2010 documented all the paganisms that came in. We are told in various ways by Eusebius that Constantine, in order to recommend the new religion to the heathen, transferred into it the ornaments to which they had been accustomed in their own. The use of temples and these dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasions with branches of trees Incense, lamps and candles, votive offerings on recovery from illness, holy water, asylums, holy days and seasons, use of calendars, processions, blessings on the fields, sacerdotal vestments, the tonsure, the ring in marriage. Turning to the east, images at a later date, perhaps the ecclesiastical chant and the Cairo Elysium are all of pagan origin and sanctified by their adoption into the church. The Vatican has openly declared that every ritual in her system was adopted from paganism. And Christians who claim to be separate from her do not have much to challenge her on for they also have adopted many of these pagan practices and when critics attack Christianity as being nothing more than a scam and a continuation of the sun worshipping Mithraic religion of Rome, they find it impossible to defend themselves. So sun worship still survives in most of the mainstream Christian churches. Let us observe them step by step. In the first edition of the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 5, it clearly documents where the pagan custom of Easter originated from. Easter the English term, according to the Venerable Bede, De Temporium Ration 1.5, relates to Eostra, a Teutonic goddess of the rising light of day and spring. William Tyler Olcott, in his well-researched book titled Sun Law of All Ages, also confirms this. He says, In short, sun worship, symbolically speaking, lies at the very heart of of the great festivals which the Christian Church celebrates today. The Christian festival of Easter has its solar characteristics. The very word Easter, says Proctor, is in its real origin as closely related to sun movements as the word East. And the notion that the sun dances on Easter morning as it rises is firmly believed today by superstitious people. In Saxony and Brandenburg, the peasants still climb the hilltops before dawn on Easter day to witness the three joyful leaps of the sun as our English forefathers used to do. Tyler tells us that the solar rite of the new fire adopted by the Roman church was a paschal ceremony 
may still